Laparoskopik female pelvic anatomy. Pelvic lateral spaces. This is the right pelvic side wall, round ligament, anterior and posterior surface. We firstly cut the peritoneum posterior to the round ligament and here we enter the retroperitoneal area. We expand the peritoneal exposure, peritoneal incision to improve the exposure in the retroperitoneal field. Here you see the incision at the anterior side of the round ligament. This is lateral to the bladder and we expand the incision to the level of the inguinal canal which is superior to the inguinal ligament. Here you see the retroperitoneal area. The other part of the retroperitoneal incision extends parallel to the inferior pelvic ligament which carries the ovarian ligaments, ovarian vessels and this is the ureter inferomedial to the inferior pelvic ligament. We transect the round ligament here and gain a better exposure at the retroperitoneal area. This is the umbilical ligament, continuation of the internal iliac artery. This is the lateral pelvic wall, pussoas muscle, gain to femoral nerve. Here you see, and medial to it, the external iliac vessels and ureter. And this is the anterior part. We pull the peritoneum of the bladder medially and we enter the paravesical space which is between the bladder, visceral fascia of the bladder, and caudal end of the external iliac vessels, deeply to the level of the uh, pelvic floor, and medial and lateral to, the, to this area, we can notice the obturator internus muscle, and this is the continuation of the arcus tendinosus levator ani, and which forms the arcus tendinosus fascia pelvis. This is the umbilical ligament at the medial side of the paravesical space attached to the paravesical fascia, uh, external iliac vein and obturator vessels which is inferior to the external iliac vein and we can notice the external uh, obturator vessels uh, normally inferior to the level of the obturator nerve but sometimes they will go together, run together and this is the obturator nerve, paravesical space, umbilical umbilical ligament and this area when we transect the medial part this dissect the medial part of the umbilical ligament uh, this is the umbilical vesical fascia which is dissected from the bladder and dissection of this plane shows the medial paravesical space which are indeed together with the lateral paravesical space and medial paravesical space. This umbilical fascia separates them. And at the cranial part of medial paravesical space, we can notice the supravesical artery and also the uterine artery with the deep part, the uterine vein. Uterine artery, here you see, supravesical artery and deeply the uterine vein at the inferior part of these arterial branches. And this is the paravesical space, lateral paravesical space and medial paravesical space with the external iliac vessels. This is the posterior side. Here you can see the ureter, which is attached to the posterior leaf of the broad ligament, the gentofemoral nerve, pussoas, and here this is the external iliac vessels. You can find it. The ureter is crossing over them and lateral to the ureter, when you make a dissection from the axis of the ureter, you will notice the internal iliac artery at the caudal lateral part of the ureter and between them, you may enter the parietal space, which is lateral to the rectum. And when you enter the space, firstly widen the space. And here you can see we widen the space and go deeply. At the deep part of the parietal space, we may notice the hypogastric autonomic nerves, ureter, internal iliac artery here at the lateral part, and the beginning of the uterine artery. Here you can see it, the uterine artery branch at the 
called the lateral part of the parietal space. This is the internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery lies at the medial side of the external iliac vein. And this is the ureter. The parietal space lies between the ureter and the internal iliac artery. The dissection at the superior part of the internal iliac artery reveals the uterine artery branch, which is a direct first branch from the internal iliac artery to the medial side, and here you can see the obliterated umbilical artery. The proximal part of the obliterated umbilical artery is a patent part. And deeply at the parietal space, you may find the pelvic splanchic nerves, which are arising from S24 uh, spinal nerves, and they lie at the medial side of the internal iliac vein and they merge with the hypogastric nerve to form the inferior hypogastric plexus. This is the internal iliac vein. Here you can see the pelvic splanchic nerves can be separated from the, from the internal iliac vein at the lateral portion of the rectum. And here you can notice the pelvic autonomic nerve system. This is the first area to identify the pelvic autonomic nerves in the pelvis important for uh, nerve sparing pelvic procedures. And uh, the hypogastric nerve, this is the dissected area, lies two centimeters inferior to the ureter. And the pelvic splanchic nerves have, a, have tiny branches which will be easily injured during dissection. The ureterohypogastric fascia is the fascia which is the continuation at the inferior portion of the ureter. When we dissect the ureter from the broad ligament posterior leaf, we develop a surgical plane at the medial side of the ureter. This plane has a fascial sheet which bears the hypogastric nerve at the inferior portion and die, uh, they lie in the uh, same axis. Now we dissect the ureter hypogastric fascia from the uh, from the broad ligament posterior leaf and also deeply from the perirectal adipose tissue and perirectal visceral fascia. And at the perirectal visceral fascia level, we may notice the hypogastric nerve. And if we dissect in the same long axis, we will dissect and lateralize the hypogastric nerve uh, from the parietal uh, visceral fascia, parietal adipose tissue. And now we will notice the whitish tissue of the hypogastric nerve. This is important for the sympathetic innervation in the pelvis, which is the continuation of the superior hypogastric plexus. And the superior hypogastric plexus is the extension of the thoracolumbar splanchic nerves with contribution of L3 splanchic nerve. And this is the parietal space. The ureter hypogastric fascia divides the parietal space into two parts. At the latter part, we may notice the pelvic splanchic nerves, which conveys the parasympathetic innervation to the pelvis and merge with the hypogastric nerve 
to form the inferior hypogastric plexus, which is a mixed ganglion with the sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation. So the lateral parietal space is important to identify the autonomic nerve structures in the pelvis and the parietal space. The topography of the pelvic lateral spaces, this is the anterior and posterior compartments. The anterior compartment is divided by the umbilical fascia and the posterior compartment is divided by the ureter hypogastric fascia. This is the lateral parietal space, the ureter, internal iliac artery, and following the internal iliac artery, we reveal the uterine artery, and external iliac vessels here. Here you can see again tofemoral nerve. And the lateral parametrium lies between the paravesical and parietal spaces. This is the lateral parametrium, which has the visceral branches of the uterine artery and uterine vein. Here you can notice it. This is the paravesical space, obturator vessels and obturator nerve. The lateral paravesical space here, important for pelvic lymphectomy, and this is the omnicovesical fascia and medial paravesical space. Laterovascular plane. The medial psoas space is important for the lumbosacral trunk. When we dissect the external iliac vessels from the psoas muscle, we may notice a psoatic branch. It should be ligated. And when we perform a dissection from this area between the psoas muscle and external iliac vessels, we may notice the obturator nerve that will that pierces the uh, that pierces the psoas muscle and extends to the pelvis and this these are the paracervical lymph nodes lying between the obturator nerve and lumbosacral trunk between the obturator nerve and lumbosacral trunk we may notice iliolumbar vessel nerve, vessels they may bleed and uh, they should be ligated carefully because they drain into the internal iliac vein. Here you can see the uh, blue tissue of the internal iliac vein here. And we perform a dissection at the inferior plane of the obturator nerve. We can notice the uh, lumbosacral trunk here, which is formed by the L4 and L5 nerves. And the uh, lumbosacral trunk forms the sciatic nerve. And inferior gluteal vessels will be noticed also at the caudal site of the, uh, this area. Here, the anatomical structures of the pelvis. This is the paravesical space, obturator vessels, external iliac vessels, um, umbilical ligament, and also uh, you can see the pelvic floor here. And uh, at the cranial part of the external iliac vessels, ureter, the beginning of the obturator nerve, let the lateral vascular plane, internal iliac vein here, and also at the medial side, the internal iliac artery, the parietal space, now the psoas muscle, the caudal end of the external iliac vessels, inguinal ligament, superior pubic ramus, obturator canal, The obturator nerovascular structures pass through the obturator canal. The pelvic visceral uh, vessels, uterine artery and uterine vein, lateral parametrium between the medial paravesical space and parietal space, pelvic splanchic nerves, hypogastric nerve, pelvic autonomic nerves, ureter hypogastric fascia, and medial side and all the pelvic retroperitoneal structures, the internal iliac artery here, gluteal artery, inferior gluteal artery, obturator artery. Thank you.